it's, it's a complete change of perception. And once again, when I use the word perception, we need to kind of go into a little bit about what perception is, because it's one of these terms that you hear sometimes, and it's like a psychological word. But we want to come to a real, real kind of a meaning, so you can have an experience of what perception is. So I'll give you an example that I share a lot of times with perception is, um, was one time I was invited to my sister's uh, wedding, and I, I went to the wedding, and there was they invited people from all different age ranges, from you know children and 20s and 30s, where my, my sister was and her boyfriend were in their 20s, and then there were people from you know 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, just a wide range of people there. And I remember sitting in the living room, and I was sitting next to a television set. The television set was right here, and I was here, so I'm kind of looking out into the living room, where couches and chairs, and people are all sitting around watching the TV set, but I can't see the TV set because I'm sitting right next to it. And um, the videotape that was playing was Eddie Murphy Raw. I don't know if anyone have heard of Eddie Murphy. <laughs> he's, a, he's a comedian who kind of uses some kind of an adult language sometimes and this and that. that. That's what was on, okay, which I wasn't seeing. I was just kind of looking out over the crowds and armchair psychologists, you know, just kind of you know, looking around. And as he was talking and everything, I looked around and it was kind of like one of these Vincent Van Gogh paintings with the splurges of different colors because some of the faces were turning very red <laughs> and the lips were real tight like this and the eyes were real pointy like this and it was kind of like this, like anger at what was being perceived you know and then I saw other faces that were red too but the eyes were like shifting back and forth and the shoulders were coming up a little bit like kind of like I can't believe I'm here the people you know watching this like embarrassment it was red face again but it was just like total embarrassment and my brother-in-law was just laughing so hard at what was happening that he was rolling out off the couch onto the ground, and I'm just watching all this, <laughs> going, wow. I see laughter, I see anger, I see, you know, embarrassment. And they're all watching the same images, and they're all hearing the same sounds. And that was my experiential sense of, of perception, is that in this state of mind in which we perceive fragmented everything, you know, separate bodies, separate duality everywhere and everything, that the mind is literally reading meaning into what it sees, as opposed to the, the common sense thing, you know, that things happen, you know, that movie made me laugh, that person makes me so angry every time I see him, or when we're little kids, you know, you, Jody made me so angry, you know, it's kind of backwards that something happens, seemingly an event happens, that determines our state of mind, you know. And this was kind of an experience of like, oh, they're all reading different meaning into the images that they're seeing and everything. And that was a kind of a real neat kind of dynamic to see. Because when I got to the course, it was like the second lesson in the book. Very fundamental was, I have given everything I see all the meaning that it has for me. Now that example kind of helped bring it home for me. It's like, ah, oh, this is what this perception business is about. So. The other thing is, is the Course says is that, you know, as, as you perceive, so you, will you respond. And also, as you perceive, so you will feel. In other words, I've always kind of been interested in emotions. Like, where, what, where do emotions come from and what are they triggered from? And, you know, in psychology, they always had the debate when you see a big bear, you know, and your heart starts pounding, you know, what comes first? Does the feeling of fear come first? Do the thoughts, you know, come, you know, I better run? or you know, what, what's going on in the mind, and different psychologists have different theories. And in the course, it comes down to um, thoughts. In other words, that there's, that in the seed state of mind, where you're, instead of perceiving unity, instead of perceiving wholeness and, and completion, when you're perceiving duality and separation and fragmentation, that there's two different thought systems that are being held in this mind. And quite simply, you could say one, one is the thought system of love and one is the thought system of fear. And the vision, or what you see as you look out from this deceived mind, is very distorted. It's like when a mind is, has two diametrically opposite thought systems held in mind, that the vision or the perception is very twisted and very distorted. Because there's a sense the mind has forgotten its true source, which is only love. And it's kind of like it's it's got an alien thought system that's in the mind. That, that isn't, it isn't natural to have this split of these two thought systems. The natural state of our mind, the Course says, is wholeness and completion. You know, this beautiful abstract light 
that um, sometimes you've heard of maybe near-death experiences where there's this beautiful light and people have these feelings of unconditional warmth and acceptance. It's, it's a sense of wholeness and completion. So as I got into the Course, you know, the, the next question a lot of times arises is, you know, well, how do I, how do I change my perception if, if I've got a perceptual problem? And the first thing the Course kind of comes at is that it's just seeing that it's a perceptual problem. In the state of mind, which most people consider the everyday life in the world, it seems as if events happen to us that are completely beyond our, uh, you know, anticipation. We don't have a lot of hand in it. It's like events just seem to happen to us, you know, and then the mind just is like has to react to these things. And and what the Course is basically saying is, here's what, if we use the analogy of a movie screen, you know, going to a movie theater, the Course would say that what we perceive in the world, you know, all these separate bodies, separate trees, separate cars, separate galaxies and stars, separate everything, that that's like the screen. That's like in the movie theater, if you go to a movie theater, that's what's happening on the screen. If I have given everything I see, all the meaning that it has for me, and my perception is very distorted, then I need to learn to let go of reading my meaning onto everything that I see and to step aside and trust that there is a presence in my mind, the Holy Spirit, the higher self, whatever you're comfortable with, that will read an entirely different meaning onto this world. You know, there'll, there'll be a vision that's entirely different from the way, the normal way of seeing. Now that's perception. Another way I could come at it would be like forgiveness because, my gosh, how many hundreds of years have we heard, you know, love your neighbor as yourself and forgive, you know, just forgive. And, and yet, it seems like in our everyday experience, like we forgive someone, and then we have another grievance, we got to forgive again over here, and then another one comes up, and it's like, and this one may be like really anchored, and we're not so sure if we can forgive. <laughs> we may have, have things that seem to happen to us in our past that, that literally seem so atrocious or so... Um, real, you know, that, that the whole idea of forgiveness seems like hocus pocus, you know, like, you know, I'll never be able to forgive so-and-so for, for what they did to me and everything. And, and once again, Jesus is kind of coming through the Course and saying, you know, as you come with me and as you go with me, you'll, you'll learn what the meaning of forgiveness is. That, once again, in the deceived state of mind, we can kind of approach it and get approximations, but the deeper we go, and follow him in our mind, the more we'll approach the meaning of true forgiveness, which is kind of like um, a synonym to that high state of mind that we just described. When you reach that vision that, that he calls true perception or healing or um, the real world, he calls it in the Course, then that's where the state of, of true forgiveness comes, where you can literally, he could just see the Christ in every brother that he met, regardless of appearances, you know, that's the thing. So, what I'll try to do is just give one more concept, and that's the idea of um, forgiveness as Jesus describes it is simply reversing the thoughts, the thought system that's in your mind. We just talked about a fear-based thought system in the mind, which some people may call the ego. And basically the main characteristic of the fear-based thought system is, is that you are tiny and you are powerless. And the things that happen on the screen, you know, are very powerful and real, and they do determine your state of mind, and you're sunk, so to speak. The ego says, look at your past, you know, that's the way it's always been in your past. Forget about the future, forget about the present, you know. Your future is going to be just as bad as your past was, you know. You're sunk, you're a sinner, <laughs> you know, you're guilty, and you're going to always be guilty. And so, this is in a sense how linear time is, you know, that's the ego's use of time. You're guilty in the past, forget about the present, you're guilty in the future. Reminds me of some of my old psychology days, the determinism. You know, what's happening outside you determines who you are, you got no choice, or you got these intra-psychic forces, and they determine who you are, you got no choice. And here comes the Course of Miracles, and Jesus is saying, the present moment is your point of power. There's, it's like a gateway into eternity, um, out, out of the linear time and into the eternal where your Heavenly Father is and where you really abide. And so Jesus has a whole different use of time 
and the Holy Spirit. So it's like training the mind to start to even think about time differently. You have the power, by, based on your decision, to determine your state of mind. Now, the ego doesn't go for that at all, because the ego believes that, that everything outside causes the state of mind. So all the courses is helping turn the thoughts around to kind of letting go of these backwards thoughts that I'm a small victim of external forces and slowly generalizing the principles to see that we have power, that our empowerment is literally our decisions.